Hi everybody, my name is Horia Perutu and today I want to talk to you about being a developer advocate and some of the pros and cons of this role. So I want to kind of share my experience. I've been working as a developer advocate for uh, about three and a half years at IBM and I want to kind of share um, what I've learned and if anybody is interested in this role, um, I want to be able to kind of tell them about what I've experienced. So first we're going to talk about what a developer advocate is, kind of what is their role, um, talk about the main um, you know, job responsibilities, and then we'll talk about kind of the pros and cons of the job, and obviously that's just my opinion. Um, this has nothing to do with my employer and um, you know, just out of my experience. And then I'll talk about you know, how to be successful in this role and kind of end it on that. Um, so what is a developer advocate? Um, so in my idea, a developer advocate is someone that helps developers um, be successful with a certain product or platform. Um, so for me, this was the IBM Cloud, and for other people, you know, um, that could be whatever product or service that um, you're, you know, uh, there to support. So you know, this kind of started becoming a more and more prevalent um, with the big uh, tech companies as there's you know more products more you know there's a platform there's more features the products can do more and more um, they needed someone to kind of help developers out um, and that uh, these um, the help kind of comes in three main buckets and this is kind of the responsibility of a developer advocate um, so the three buckets that i like to think of it as is code content and community so let's go ahead a little bit deeper into each of these. So code, um, one, of course, you need to have some sort of technical background. You need to be good at programming. And the code that you're writing is not building features for a product, but you're showing integrations between products. You're showing um, applications on top of a certain API. Um, you're doing um, open source contributions. Um, so you know th that's kind of what the code piece is. So sometimes that could be writing little tutorials, little um, how to get started applications, little integrations between different APIs. It's usually not um, as big and as comprehensive of a project as if you're working on a massive code base on you know a, a platform or a project or a um, product. The second is content. Um, so if the product team comes up with a new feature, you you may be responsible for blogging about it talking about the new features, uh, you may be responsible for uh, tutorials. Um, so how to easily get onboarded with a platform developer, with a platform and helping that um, user experience. And of course your user is the developer. So many call it, you know, developer experience, developer relations. That's where kind of that term comes in. Um, and the last part is community. Um, so that is answering um, Stack over Overflow questions about your product that is you know, answering GitHub issues, that is speaking at conferences, doing workshops, um, doing you know, customer workshops maybe. Um, that, that's kind of what that community aspect is. So you know, there's kind of a lot of different roles. You're wearing a lot of different hats. It's, that's why it makes it a very interesting role. Um, so those are kind of the main three buckets. Now let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of this job. So. I really um, didn't know much about the job before I joined, um, and I think it uh, it was a very it was a great way to kind of start my career. Um, the pros of the job are that you get to travel a lot. Um, I got to see a lot of new countries. I went to Portugal, India, uh, Canada, um, Uruguay. I got to see a lot of different parts of the world, a um, bunch of places in Europe. I got to go to Copenhagen. I got to go to Barcelona. It was. Um, it was a great experience, um, but um, you know I'll talk about the cons later. But that travel sometimes can wear you down, and it's it's a lot. Especially, it's not as fun when it's your job, right? You're not there to explore the city. You're there to give a workshop or give a keynote or um, talk to customers or help out at the booth. Um, so it's a little bit different. Um, the other pro of the job is creativity. So. Whether you can kind of pick the medium of, of your choice, you know, if you really like doing videos, you can do videos. If you really like doing blogs, you can do that. If you want to build an online course, you could do that. Um, you know, you kind of can get as creative as you want um, with it. You know, if you want to build integrations with certain products, you can choose that. You know, as long as you're helping the customer and as as long as you're helping other developers, that's kind of 
um, you, you know, there's no real limit to, to how you do it, which is really, really nice. Um, another big pro is that is, I think maybe the biggest pro is that you build your own personal brand. So you're speaking at conferences, you meet a lot of industry experts. Um, you're putting out blogs on your own personal blog. You're pr putting out videos on your own YouTube channel. You know, you really build your own brand and people start to know you, they trust you more. Um, and it's, it's a really great way to jumpstart your career. Um, you also kind of understand competitors' technologies, you understand your technologies, you understand the pros and cons of a certain platform and product. Um, so it, it's it's pretty nice. You kind of also get more, um, you get a little bit of a look into the product team. You know, you get close to the product team. You tell them, hey, you know, from this workshop, the customers that were using the product didn't like this feature. So I, I hope that you guys can change that in the future, right? So you kind of get tightly integrated with the product team. You get tightly integrated with the community that's using your product. It's, a, it's an interesting balance. So now let's talk a little bit about the cons of the job. You know, every single job has pros and cons. Um, the cons, I think, are kind of similar to the pros in kind of a weird way. Um, traveling can get a lot, um, you know, it can, it, can, it can get very tiring. Especially if you're kind of traveling over the weekend, like I did, um, it was hard to kind of build a routine at home. Um, you know, I moved to San Francisco for my job and I was paying, a, you know, rent is very expensive in San Francisco and most weekends I wasn't home. Um, so that was definitely a con for me. Um, I couldn't really join the tennis leagues that I want to join. I, you know, I couldn't really do stuff in the city as much as I wanted to. It was hard to really build a schedule or a routine. Some people like that. Some people love that. Um, and then that's how you know this role is for you. Um, another con is that you're kind of limited by the product or platform that you're um, working for, right? So if that product or platform doesn't have certain features, um, you're not the one building those features, right? Like you help influence what's going to be built, but you're not physically coding up this platform or product, right? So you're kind of limited by what functionality it has. Um, so you got to be careful there. Um, you know, you should really um, kind of know what team you're going to go for, uh, understand the product or platform that you're going for and, and kind of know the limits of that, right? Um, that's important. Now for some tips to make sure you're successful. I think the biggest thing that I learned is to not get attached to a certain piece of content um, and really put out as much content in as different many, in as many different mediums as possible. So I, exper I experimented with podcasts. I exper experimented with creating a Coursera course, which I'll link in the description. I experimented with, you know, tutorials, um, videos, obviously this is a video, blogs, um, GitHub issues, like everything. And you're really getting attached to a piece of content is not gonna help you. Um, I remember I spent about a week, uh, maybe a week and a half building out a blog when I was working uh, close to the closely with the blockchain platform. And I thought, you know, this is the most innovative blog ever. And I posted it and 10 people viewed it. And then a few days later, I go to a meetup and talk and talk about my experience at a meetup and a blog and that blog gets 20,000 views and it just explodes. And I was like, what, you know, what happened? Um, I thought this piece of content was really good. Apparently I was wrong. You know, everybody else didn't think that. Maybe it was timing, maybe it was luck, maybe, you know, some kind of influential person retweeted it, but, um, I think the most important thing is to kind of produce a lot of content. And one kind of con that I didn't talk about, but I think is important, is that there's no real like hard metrics for the job. It's hard to define what success is. Um, so it's hard to prove to your manager or to your team that, hey, I'm doing a great job because there's not really the same metrics as they may be in sales, where it's like, oh, if you hit a quota, you're gonna get a bonus. Um, it's not like that. Um, so, you know, being clear and upfront um, at the beginning of the year saying, hey, you know, what are the metrics? What's the most important um, is really is really key um, to kind of prove that um, you, you're being successful and you're doing the right things. So yeah, that's kind of my two cents. Um, I think the biggest advice that I have is just to produce as much content as possible, build that audience, um, build that personal brand. And that means every time you post a piece of content, whether that's blog, video, anything, you get feedback that much faster. Uh, was it good? Was the feature good? Um, you know that you're actually having an impact and you're helping a bigger audience of people. And you know, scale is really what really matters here. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, now you know that kind of what a developer advocate is. Um, it's, it's a software engineer, a technical person that is helping 
other developers be successful and, and kind of bridging the gaps between the developer experience of a certain product. We talked about the pros and cons, you know, there's a lot of travel, um, kind of a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of weekends that you may have to give up. Um, but you also have these incredible experiences of speaking at conferences and speaking at, um, in front of a lot of people and, uh, kind of learning a lot too. Um, and you know, being successful is really, um, pinning down those metrics, kind of defining those and then building on that and building that personal brand. That's really what it comes down to. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Um, please comment below if you have any suggestions for new videos, things like that. And I really appreciate you and have a great, um, great week. Thanks.